All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the K Reviews Podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Moss, a rapper and recording artist out of Reno, Nevada. We, we, when I say we, me and my friend Marco, who made all the beats, just dropped a brand new mixtape entitled Las Sombras. You can find that anywhere you listen to music. Um, links will be in the description below to make it even easier for you. Um, but yeah, anywhere, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, um, Amazon, Deezer, everywhere. It's everywhere. Go listen to it, guys. Let me know what you think. I dropped another album earlier this year. Go check out that one as well. But enough of all that, enough about me. Let's get into the topic of today's video. It's going to be a ranking video for the discography of none other than Aesop Rock, one of the greatest rappers of all time. If you ask me, one of the, certainly one of the best underground rappers of all time. Um, and absolutely incredibly impressive discography this man has. Um, and I'm super excited to get into ranking it today. Um, as you can see, for the occasion, we've got an all Aesop vinyl wall. Again, I told you I told you guys early on when I started this channel, I'm going to try to flex my vinyl collection in these videos, and that's what I'm doing. Um, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Make sure that you... Most of the people that who watch my videos are not subscribed. There's a ton of people who watch my videos and are not subscribed. So subscribe. It helps a ton. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff. Um, it helps a ton. And I post shorts of my record collection on here. I post shorts of my record collection on TikTok. Go follow me on TikTok. Anyway, enough of the plugs. Um, let's get into this ranking video, man. Aesop Rock, uh, incredibly impressive rapper, and I'm super stoked to get into this. Now, there's a few albums that I'm not going to be ranking in this video. The Uncluded album, I will not be ranking. This Simply, I haven't heard it, um, and I was just too excited to get into doing this video to go check it out. And from what I know, it's not really a rap album. Um... From what I what I have heard from it, it's not really a rap album. So, the Uncluded is not going to be on this list. The Weatherman album is not going to be on this list. It's it's mostly a compilation album between a ton of artists. So I just didn't want to rank it amongst the Aesop Rock, um, Aesop Rock ranking. Um, and then a couple other projects that won't be on here. The soundtrack that he did for the video game Freedom Finger. I'm not going to be ranking that. It's it's a soundtrack. Um, and same thing with the Bushwick soundtrack. It's a soundtrack. I'm not going to be ranking it. Um, but every other album this man has been a part of, or maybe not been a part of, but every album that has been released under this man's name or with this man's name and attachment to somebody else is going to be on this list. In total, it is a ranking of 18 albums. And let's just get into it, man. I'm going to kind of breeze through... Some of my lower ones, I really want to get to the top 10 and really go in depth on this top 10. Um, so I'm going to breeze through a lot of the lower ones. And a lot of the lower ones are EPs as well. So, you know, natural to kind of breeze through them. They're much shorter projects. But um, actually, at number 18, I have an album that is not an EP. I have Bazooka Tooth, released in 2003. And, you know... This is not a bad album. Um, I will say it is kind of hard to hear. I don't. I, I, I just started mixing, so I'm not in any position to criticize mixes. But for me personally, this is um, a little bit hard to hear what's going on with this album sometimes. I have to really, really pay attention. And I, I don't know if that's on purpose. It is a, a very experimental album, so I could see mixing it in this way being on purpose, um, especially when you get to a song like Cook It Up. The mix doesn't sound as bad. Um, but nonetheless, Bazooka Tooth is my least favorite Aesop Rock album. Is it a bad Aesop Rock album? No. Is it a non-creative Aesop Rock album? No, it is certainly creative. Um, but just for me personally, it's not, it, it's, it's not one I go back to. And if I was going to pick of these 18, which one to go back to, that would quite literally be my last choice. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, Bazooka Tooth at number 18 for me. At number 17, I got Malibu Ken. And I know a lot of people, like, a lot of Aesop fans kind of really like this album. I, maybe it's it's tobacco for me. I just, that sound just, I can't get into it. Um, but nonetheless, again, I'm not going to say any of these albums are bad. Um, I don't think any of these albums are bad. I think when you're an artist as talented as Aesop Rock is, um, I don't think you have a bad album. I think you have albums that maybe are subpar compared to other albums, but... I. To the general public, as far as just a random person trying to make music, you are levels above them. So, none of these albums are bad. Um, but Malibu Ken, again, one that I'm not super big on. Then we get to Daylight, um, which was an EP that came out after Labor Days in 2002. Um, I like it. It's solid, but again, just a little EP, nothing crazy. That's why it's ranked so low. 
Are You Gonna Eat That? Hail Mary Mallet. And this is a full-length project. The first one that he did with his with Rob Sonic as their group, Hail Mary Mallon. And um, it's a good album. I don't return to it very often. Um, and the EPs and albums that I have above it, um, I do return to pretty regularly. So um, that's that was just my reasoning for keeping it this low. Again, n- not a bad album, but just not one of my favorites. Um, then we get to the first Lice EP with Homeboy Sandman. It is my least favorite of the Lice projects, but nonetheless, it is a really good EP. I'm not a big fan of the last track, the uh, Fort Minor remix, the one about the dogs. I can't remember what the name of it, um, but I'm not a super big fan of that track. But the Lice EP overall is is really good. Um, and then we get Fast Cars, Danger Fire, and Knives. I know some people are really big on this EP. Might think this is a little bit low, but just the other EPs and albums that I have ranked above it, I just like more, um, if I'm being honest. But nonetheless, Fast Cars, Danger Fire, and Knives is a really good EP that came out in 2005. If you want like a short, sweet listen of Aesop Rock, um, it's, a, it's a really good one. Go check it out if you haven't. Um, at number 12, we've got Lice 2, Still Buggin' with Homeboy Sandman. This is my second favorite in the Lice series. I think it's really, really good. I think it's almost my favorite, but the third one, which I have ranked at number 11, Triple Fat Lice, that came out in 2017, um, is my favorite in their EP run. And, you know, if they had taken these EPs and just made them one big Lice album and put it out in 2017, it would probably have made the top 10. Um, but as individual EPs here, um, they all of them just barely miss making it into Aesop's top 10. So I definitely rushed through that. I definitely went through that very quickly, um, especially in comparison to my Nas ranking video. I spent a lot more time on the lower albums in the Nas ranking video. Um, But this one, I was just really excited to get to the top 10. And um, yeah, man. So at number 10, we have the second Hail Mary Mallon album, Bestiary, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, It's a really good album, man. I enjoyed it a lot more than the first one. Um, I go back to this one, Definitely more than the first one. Um, I felt like Aesop Rock and Rob Sonic's chemistry was really shining through on this album. They were going back and forth with verses effortlessly. Um, It's a very good album. I I would definitely recommend it. At number nine is where we get into the records that I have on the wall. So the records that I have on the wall here are the top nine, in my opinion. Um, At this bottom left one here, we have Appleseed. That is my number nine ranking. Um... And it's a good, it's a good album. It, you know, a lot of people, I think Aesop's early stuff could be difficult to, um, well, really Aesop's stuff in general can be really difficult to get into, um, for the average ear. Um, but especially his early stuff, I I think to be the case, um, that album is super interesting. It kicks off with a, with an intro that is, um, a beatbox. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, that is, that's the instrumental that he raps over on the first song. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I think this album is really good. Um, it's, it, is it an album or an EP? It's only eight tracks. I've been calling it an album. It's 32 minutes. So I've been calling it an album. Um, but I mean, dry spell is a really good song. You get the second part of the tugboat complex, which is a really good series in Aesop's discography on this project. You get the song sick friend which is really, really good. Um, A Thousand Deaths, which is really, really good. So Appleseed is a really good, again, relatively short listen, eight tracks. Um, I enjoy it, man. I enjoy it a lot. And without further ado, this is where we get into the albums that are like, these are the Aesop Rock albums that I absolutely love. Everything up to this point, I think is good or I like it, um, even if it's not maybe necessarily for me personally. But everything from here on out, from number eight, Um, obviously through number one, is all albums that I absolutely absolutely love for one reason or another. So at number eight, we have, where is it at? Actually right above Appleseed, um, Float, which came out in 1999, the year I was born. Um, And again, it's light, it's a similar sound, similar feel to Appleseed, but um, it is much bigger, feels much more grand. And you can definitely tell that Aesop has, I think, grown even more as a songwriter and as a rapper coming into this album. Um, Commencement at the Obedience Academy. Well, I mean, really, really, those first, I want to say, like, 
the the first section of the album float commencement at the obedience academy big bang garbage i'll be okay with slug and then you get to the breakfast with blockhead interlude um that for that stretch is such a such a great way to start the album in my opinion um and the the blockhead interludes are so sick man they're so they're crazy beats they're crazy beats it's kind of like a mad villainy thing where like sick fit and super villain theme off mad villainy i almost wish doom would have rapped on them because the beats are so crazy but at the same time they're better not being rapped on because the beats are so crazy that like you don't want to ruin them um that's kind of a similar thing here with with these blockhead interludes on flow um yeah man th this album is super sick um i think songs like how to be a carpenter spare match um drawbridge the mare and the crook it just shows Aesop's really creative writing style um, and his ability to use metaphor, and yeah, man, it's 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 a really good it's a really good project, especially for early Aesop. Um, you'll tell by the ranking in this video that I'm certainly a much bigger fan of later Aesop than I am of early Aesop. Um, but no, of early Aesop, this is this is in there. I forgot to mention I'm not ranking music for Earthworms. In this video too, I, this is it's really late for me to be saying that, but I'm not ranking music for Earthworms either because I couldn't find it anywhere, man. I was trying to listen to it, um, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so that one is not in this ranking either. Yeah, man. Nonetheless, Float ranked at number eight, um, and then going into number seven, we have in the bottom left corner here skeleton um that is my number seven ranking is skeleton and skeleton is an album that i know a lot of aesop rock fans are like very high on um and i understand why because it's a very well crafted album and there are there are songs on here that are i think super iconic for aesop songs like um zzz top zero dark 30 ruby 81 um homemade mummy grace tetra go for guts i think those are very very iconic songs for aesop if you're an aesop rock fan um but there's just some about this album that it's not like as perfect to me as the ones that i have above it like the ones i have above it i love pretty much pretty much every song on the album um and this one there's definitely ones where i'm not as big of a fan of for me personally crows one the hook i'm i'm not sure of her name um but I, I, that hook just really, it doesn't, I, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like that hook. I, I don't, I don't skip the song because I do think it's a good, well-crafted song. But for some reason, that hook just doesn't resonate with me. Um, another song, I think it's Racing Stripes, the one about haircuts. That one doesn't really resonate with me either. Aesop is, when he, ha when he does his more humorous songs like that, normally they do resonate with me. Normally they end up being some of my favorite songs from him. But for some reason, that one just felt a little bit too, like, cartoony for me, especially in the context of an album that, like, is relatively dark and talking about dark themes. And maybe that's why it's on there. Maybe he felt he needed to lighten the mood a little bit. But, um, yeah, man, I, I, I don't know. That one just didn't really hit with me either. But nonetheless, it is, this is a phenomenal album. It's a reason why it's ranked this high. If people put this in their top five Aesop Rock albums, I certainly understand why. If somebody were to tell me that this was their favorite Aesop Rock album, I certainly understand why. Um, but for me, there is just definitely the top six that I have above it are definitely six that I think are almost perfect. Like, like I love pretty much every song on them, so... I have to have to go with the top six that I went with. And speaking of that top six, at number six, I have in the top left corner there, Garbology, the recent uh, collab album with Blockhead, Aesop Rock linking back up with Blockhead in 2021. Um, Blockhead was obviously a big part of Aesop's production early in his career. Um, and then Aesop at a certain point kind of picked up the production himself for the most part. Um, he was making his own beats. But... Um, Linked back up with Blockhead for Garbology here, and it's clear that Blockhead has not lost, um, not lost the magic. You know, I think the beats on here are all really, really good still, um, and I think this is a, a album. This is an album certainly where I don't skip a single track. Um, I l I love this album front to back. When I play it, I play the whole thing. Um, Aesop is is rapping really well, and it's very bright. Um, it's a very charismatic album. Um, 
And something that was actually really cool about that vinyl, um, it fits in with the Garbology theme. I'll do a video on it, um, a, a short on it soon. And for, as I as I said, I post shorts and TikToks about my vinyl collection. I'll do one soon on that Garbology vinyl. But um, it plays into the Garbology concept by having the the vinyl itself be made out of recycled records. And then um, also the sleeve for the vinyl is garbage bags. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um but yeah, nonetheless, man, Jazz Hands is is awesome. Super sick way to start the album. Wolf Piss is awesome. League or Domain, I hope I'm saying that right. That song is awesome. Uh, Folks say I'm difficult. It's funny, I'm real easy. That one is sick. I like that one. Um, All the smartest people, where he's where he says his neighbors spot him casing his own house, and they have that little funny interaction. Um, I really like that one. I could every every song, man, every song. Um, I do want to mention The Sea. I love the concept behind that record. I think the album could have ended there, but Abandoned Malls is really good as well, so I'm not even mad that the album didn't end there. But The Sea was just a really good late album track um, towards the album, getting ready to close the album kind of track. The Sea was awesome. But um, Garbology, nonetheless, really, really, really great Aesop Rock album. Nearly made my top five, but um, I felt that Aesop Rock fans might crucify me if I put this one over the one I have at number five. So I, <laughs> I left this one. That's not the main reason. Um, there's also nostalgia factored in as well. Um, but yeah, Garbology at number six, very, very close to making the top five. At number five, um, I'm going to go with released in 2001, Labor Days. And as far as I know, this was the first album for Aesop that like really, really gained um, traction. Um as far as like from having a wide audience um, standpoint, but this album is really really good. I think the production here is one of my favorite things about it. Um, it even though it was released in two thousand and one, it still has a very nineties boom bap feel to these beats. Um, and Aesop's songwriting, as always, is phenomenal. Daylight is an incredibly well written song. Um, save yourself is really funny where he's just like calling out rappers who say they they need to save hip hop. He's like, what the fuck are you saving? Nothing needs to be saved. Hip hop is in a great place. Um, so I thought that was cool. No regrets. The song about Lucy is one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite songs from Aesop. Um, again, you get part three of the tugboat, the tugboat complex. Um, yeah, man, this, this, this whole album front to back, I think is a really, really quality listen and, um, you know, I believe Aesop Rock quit his, quit his job at the, at the time of the release of this album or at the time of him making this album. Um, but you can just really sense the frustration with the capitalistic working environment on this album. And so if you're somebody who is coming home from work every single day, exhausted and just really frustrated with capitalism at the moment, um, Labor Days is a perfect, perfect album for you. So go, go listen to it. Um. Nine to Fiver's anthem, the shovel um, really, really embodies embodies that feeling. Um, but I, I, I would say it's prevalent throughout the entirety of the album. Um, but nonetheless, Labor Day is really, really good in my top five. Um, a lot of people probably going to be mad for me having it at five and not higher. I know this is like some people's favorite Aesop album, um, and I understand why. But for me, for me, I'm going to put it at five. And this, this is where we get in the top four, man. So the top four is like. Some of my favorite rap albums ever, man. Like, and not even just some of my favorite rap albums ever, but some of the rap albums that like I'm just so impressed with because every time I return to them, something else clicks, or something else uh, I notice something else that just absolutely blows my mind and impresses me. Um, but these four rap albums are some of my favorite rap albums of all time. Um, these are my top four Aesop Rock albums. We will get right into it. Um, possibly controversial. Some people may have this one higher, but this is where I have it. The Impossible Kid, which the vinyl for this is absolutely incredible, man. Um, it has a big poster of the cover that you can color yourself, and then you can insert it in the front to have your version of the cover be the actual cover. The sleeves, uh, or I believe um, it's not the poster. It, it does come with the poster, but it's the sleeves that you can color, uh, color and then insert them in the front to change the cover. Um some of the coolest sleeves I think I've, I've ever seen. That, that's one of the coolest ideas that I've seen on any vinyl that I've bought. Um, but nonetheless, let's talk about the album itself. 
this album is so good, so good of a listen from front to back. Um, it kicks off with Mystery Fish. I mean, I mean the stretch from Mystery Fish to Rings to Lot of Years to Dorks. What a way to kick off an album. Um, Rabies is really good as well. You get Blood Sandwich, which is an ode to his brothers, um, and Aesop's storytelling is like really, really good on that song. Um, he, it's such a weird instance that he tells a story about, um, but he does it really well nonetheless. Um, and he's humorous in the way he does it. And I absolutely love the stretch from tracks 8 to 10, Get Out of the Car, Shrunk, and Kirby. They're almost like a three-part series a little bit, or just in the way that they flow together. Um, but Get Out of the Car, it's almost like Aesop is sitting in the car having a therapeutic conversation with himself before he actually goes in to see a shrink and have a real therapeutic conversation. Um, and at the end of the song, he gets out the car, goes into the shrink, and has this back and forth with his shrink that is just genius. I mean, like, the the songwriting on the song Shrunk is exceptional. It's one of Aesop's best songs, if you ask me. And then after at the end of um, Shrink, we get to Kirby, and the last thing he says on Kirby is 15 plus years taking prescriptions, now his shrink like, I don't know, maybe get a kitten. And so it's cool, because it's like he was sitting in the car, having a rough time prior to the shrink appointment, then you get the shrink appointment, and then you get him getting get a song about his cat, because the shrink basically was like, look, dude, just get a fucking cat. I don't know anymore at this point. Um, I, I just love that three-song stretch. I think that's awesome. And then you get tracks like Tough and Lazy Eyes, which are just bar fests, and Aesop just kind of showing off at this point. You get funny songs like Defender, which I believe is about being part of the Neighborhood Watch. Um, Water Tower and Molecules, both really good ways to close out the album. Rings towards the beginning of the album is another one of Aesop's best, most well-written songs. Um, Impossible Kid is an incredible in incredible album. Um, the Impossible Kid, everything that he touched turned probably to shit. Such a good album. Um, highly recommend it. Some people are probably going to be mad at me for not having this higher. And it was really hard for me to put it at four. But ranking these top four was really difficult for me in the first place. I think this one and the three I have above it really are almost interchangeable to me. Um, and any on any given day, my number one out of these four could change. But I think on most days, Impossible Kid is my number four. Um, so I'm going to have it at number four in this video. Um, at number three, and this is a... Big, big, super personal favorite of mine. I When I first heard this album, I was in the perfect environment to hear it. I was out in the wilderness amongst trees, late at night, super, super creepy environment, seeing deer everywhere and shit like that. Just super creepy environment, perfect for this album. I'm talking about Spirit World Field Guide, which came out in 2020. And this is an album that I actually skipped over. I was an Aesop Rock fan prior to this album coming out, and somehow when it came out, I missed it. I didn't know it came out. Probably was engulfed in the pandemic or something. I don't know. I, I was living under a rock, clearly. Um, but I missed it. And I went back to visit it this year. And the first time I heard it, I was in the perfect environment. And I fell in love with it, man. I absolutely love this album. It is one of my favorite rap albums of this decade. No doubt about it. Um, it it's, it's such a cool concept. It, it's executed in a very unique way. And it's an album that lends itself to so many repeat listens just because the lyrics can be picked apart forever and ever. And I think Aesop flow wise on this album was just impeccable. Um, and again, just the vibe. And again, maybe it's, I just heard it for the first time in the most perfect environment, but I, I love I love this album, man, from to back. I think Hello from the Spirit World is one of my favorite intros to any album ever. I think it's perfect. Um, the Gates, Button Masher, Dog at the Door, Gauze, Pizza Alley, Crystal Sword, Coveralls, Jumping Coffin, uh, Sleeper Car, Attaboy, Kotokushi. It, it, I might have put this too low. I might have put this too low. Um, I think my reason... I, I'll get into my reasoning for why I have the two above it that I have above it. But... Um, as f man, this is a, a big personal favorite of mine. I absolutely love Spirit World Field Guide. I think it's an incredible album. If you skipped over it like I did, go back and listen to it because it is awesome. It is awesome. And it's all about his um, ayahuasca trip, I believe. Not all about it, but uh, certain, certainly a heavy inspiration for a lot of the lyrics was that ayahuasca trip. Ayahuasca trip. Um, and the way that he decides to break down that trip in his bars it, with very unique metaphor and very cool metaphor and just with this kind of fictional spirit world that he's created, it's super sick, man. It's super sick. Um, 
Yeah, I, I love this album. One of the one of his best albums, in my opinion. I stopped pointing out the records on the wall. We got Labor Days right there. We got I did I did point out Impossible Kid, but we got Spirit World Field Guide up there, and it's a translucent, completely see through vinyl, um, and it's a gatefold as well. Um, and the cover art actually, when you pull the gatefold open and look at it from the back, the back part of the cover and the front cover actually make one big picture. Which there's a lot of vinyl like that, but nonetheless, very cool. Um, but yeah, let's get into number two on my list. And number two on my list is the album that came out this year, 2023, Integrated Tech Solutions, which I have right here, right above my head. Um, and the vinyl for this is actually really cool as well. It's also a gatefold, has a bunch of graphs and stats that really fits in with the science theme and has, um, has, uh, really cool sleeves that are designed to look like, like confidential files in a, in a filing cabinet, which is really cool. Um, but nonetheless, it's ranked in this spot not because of the vinyl packaging. It's ranked in this spot because of the album itself. Um, this is obviously a ranking on just the album themselves, the music itself. Um, and my reasoning for putting this one above Spirit World Field Guide, for a long time I actually had Spirit World Field Guide above this one. And I think what made me make the transition was there is more songs on Integrated Tech Solutions that I think can be pulled out of Integrated Tech Solutions and listened to by themselves than is the case with Spirit World Field Guide. I think with Spirit World Field Guide, it very much is when you got to listen to the whole album. And Integrated Tech, Tech Solutions is that way as well. But I think Integrated Tech Solutions is an album that is like that, but then also just these are great songs that can be pulled away from the album as well. Um, and I, I also, I don't know, man, something about... Some about integrated tech solutions just seemed a little bit more focused and a little bit more um, extravagant to me and bigger to me. Um, and maybe it's just rose tinted glasses because it just came out this year. But I also just heard Spirit World Field Guide for the first time this year. Um, and I have bias towards Spirit World Field Guide because I had such a great first listen experience with it. So, um, yeah, I think it shows I'm being unbiased by by giving the edge to Integrated Tech Solutions. I really do think it is the better of the two. Um, and I have it at number two, man. I mean, every song on here, um, I favorited. Every song on this album, I favorited on my Apple Music. Um, it is incredible, and I think it has a very wide variety of different styles of tracks. It was cool to hear the features. Like, like to hear Billy Woods on here was really sick. Um but I love all the songs. I love that we get Aesop's humor. He sounds like he's in such a good place mentally on this album. Um, but he still is very introspective, um, you know, has a lot of questions to ask. And yeah, man, I, I, I can't get enough of this album. And I love thinking about how even the songs that are more surface level or humorous, like I love how they still fit into the concept at large when you really think about it. Um yeah, man, I'm super impressed with this. This is, I had it ranked at number two in my top 10 albums of 2023 video. Um, it might be number one, and I said that in the video, but I, I was really wrestling between that one and the one I did put at number one, but arguably the best album of 2023, Integrated Tech Solutions. Um, incredible, incredible album, and probably my second favorite Aesop Rock album. If I was going to have somebody like listen to Aesop Rock for the first time and they were like, oh, what albums? you know, should I play first? Um, I would probably recommend them to listen to either this one or the one I have in my number one spot first. I might go with this one. This one is just so incredibly well-crafted, and I think it's one of the more more accessible of his, of his releases, and that's not why it's so high here, but um, I do think it lends to why that lends itself to showing just how good the music is. I think the music is good enough to where Aesop Rock's unaccessible style um, was still accessible on this project because the music is just that good. Um, but then again, you do see that he is not trying to be as weird or as experimental as he has been on other projects with this one, but he's not sacrificing the artistic integrity at all, um, which almost just makes this one even, even more impressive. But yeah, every song, man, front to back, it is damn near a perfect album. Integrated Tech Solutions at number two. And who knows, maybe given more time to sit with it, maybe I end up putting it at number one eventually. But Nostalgia got the best of me on this ranking, and I'm going to have um, Integrated Tech Solutions at number two. And I'm actually going to have this bad boy in the top left corner. I'm going to have that one, Nunshaw Pass, at number one. 
Um, and None Shall Pass being my number one has a lot to do with nostalgia. Whenever I listen to this album, I'm instantly transported to being a high school kid and trying to draw the cover art of this album as I listen to Catacomb Kids, as I listen to Fumes, and just going from class to class and getting farther and farther into the cover and drawing the cover as I'm listening to the album on repeat. And um, I, I just get really taken back taken back to a time when I listened to this album. And I think that's a big portion, big reason why it ends up being my number one. Um, I do think it's damn near interchangeable with any of the albums that I have um, in this top four, or even top five. Um, I think any one of these albums in the top five, if you said was Aesop's best, I would 100% understand it because I really struggled to rank um, these ones towards the top to the point where nostalgia was really the tiebreaker here to get Nunshaw Pass. Um, yeah, man, there's it's just one of those albums where I don't skip anything. Again, I play it front to back. I see it as damn near perfect. Um, but songs, songs like None Shall Pass, Catacomb Kids, Bring Back Pluto, 39 Thieves, Citronella, Five Fingers, No City, Coffee, and Pigs. Those are some of my favorite Aesop Rock songs ever, especially Pigs. Pigs might be my personal favorite Aesop Rock, Aesop Rock song ever. Um, but yeah, just, just a really, really, really impressive album. And um, I think it has a very unique production style throughout the album. Um, the, the mix... I can't wait for them to remaster this. I hope we get like a 20-year edition of this album um, because it does sound quiet to me for some reason. Um, I have to, I've always find myself having to turn the volume up whenever I go from one album, from another album to this album. Um, but once I turn the volume up, it is perfect. Um, so yeah, None Shall Pass is my personal favorite Aesop Rock album. Super nostalgic for me. Incredibly well-written songs throughout it front to back. Super impressive. I was incredibly impressed with it the first time I heard it, and I'm still incredibly impressed with it every single time I listen to it. It is super sick, super nostalgic, um, and it is my favorite Aesop Rock album, at least as of right now. Integrated Tech Solutions and Spirit World Field Guide, if given more time to sit with them, um, I really love those projects. So maybe they can make, maybe they can give None Shall Pass a run for its money. But as of right now, None Shall Pass is my personal favorite Aesop Rock album. I know some people might not like me putting None Shall Pass at number one because I do believe it's probably his most commercially successful album. Um, and you know how people are about that. They're always like, oh, the most mainstream one is, how could you say that's the best one? Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think with Aesop Rock, nothing is mainstream. Um, I, even this album, which had None Shall Pass, which was probably, which had None Shall Pass, which is probably his biggest hit. Um, it still wasn't, like, like mainstream, mainstream, um, still was an underground album, um, but yeah, man, I, incredible discography, that's my ranking from 1 through 18, um, I'm sorry for not including music for Earthworms and the other albums that I didn't include, um, but yeah, that is my ranking of Aesop Rock albums from my least favorite to my personal favorite, let me know how you guys would rank the albums below and what you guys think about Aesop Rock. Where does where does Aesop rank um, amongst rappers all time to you? I know for me personally, I mean, my my rapper ranking is always changing, but as far as my personal top five goes right now, I probably have Aesop at like number two. Um, I've been listening to him a ton lately, and as a rapper myself, just trying to get better, so... Yeah, uh, Aesop might be, he's certainly probably in my top five as of right now. And again, my top five is always fluctuating, you know, give it some time. Maybe he leaves it and then comes back into it again at some point. It's always changing. But as of right now, I think Aesop Rock has a very strong case for being a top five rapper of all time. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you think about Aesop? Please, please, please go listen to Las Sombras. Me and Marco uh, worked really hard on that project. Um, and please go listen to Michael Kenneth Smith. An ode to uh, my cousin that I released earlier this year. But yeah, go listen to it. Go listen to it, especially if you listen to Las Sombras and you like it. There's certainly some tracks on that one that Marco produced as well. And let me know what you think about Aesop and these albums in the comment below. In the comments below, go follow my TikTok. Click all the links in the description, all that good stuff. There was something else I was going to say, and I cannot remember what it was for the life of me right now. Oh, we're going to be doing a makings of uh, Las Sombras podcast um next week so we're gonna get marco in here and we're just gonna kind of talk about how las sombras was made go in depth on each of the tracks give a little bit of background information to the track some context to 
you know, how they were made, what was the thought process behind making them, what was the intention behind making them, um, how they came to be, things like that. So we're going to do one of those podcast episodes. Again, I'm going to keep the vinyl shorts coming. I'm going to keep um, the music coming for sure. I'm going to keep the YouTube videos coming, the discography rankings, the album reviews, all that good stuff. We're going to keep everything coming, keep everything rolling, um, music and YouTube-wise. So, yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys for listening. Um, please go listen to my album and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.